Alright YouTube, Matt M. Roy back again. As you can see I have this uh, Dell out that I uh, picked up yesterday. This was part of that uh, Craigslist trade. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and install this uh, Seagate Momentous 250 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. Now the gentleman I bought this from at the garage sale today assured me that it works and we're going to find out right now. So the very first thing when you're working on a laptop, you want to make sure there's no power attached, albeit the AC adapter or the battery. So we're going to go ahead and remove the battery. You just pull this tab here and slide it out. Now, in this case, the hard drive is located on the side, and you just need to remove these two screws. One. and then the tray here just slides out like this and there's the old hard drive now I have to remove in this case just these two screws here one on either side and then I'll go ahead and put the new drive in so I'll be back in just a minute one quick thing to note when you're putting this back on make sure that the screw holes are aligned properly with the bracket on both sides because if you don't you're gonna get it get it lopsided and then it won't go in properly and you could risk damaging the uh, SATA connectors. Alright, now that we got the screws in there securely, tight but not too tight, I mean, you don't want to strip them out, you see this isn't moving, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in, and it slides in just like that, don't push too hard, if you have to push hard then you've done something wrong. Now the last thing to do is go ahead and install the two screws again and then we'll be ready to go ahead and uh, test this laptop. Alright, now the new hard drive's in, everything aligned properly. We'll go ahead and reinstall the battery and just make sure the connector gets in the proper place. There we go. Now I don't know if this battery has a full charge or not so I'm going to go ahead and pop on the new AC adapter and we'll go, we'll go turn on and see if this hard drive does indeed function. Got a green light on the AC adapter, that's always a good sign. Go ahead and plug it into power. We should get a power LED on the front coming up in just a second. Hmm. Well that's not good. The only way that wouldn't come up is if the battery was fully charged, and I highly doubt that, but you know what, let's go for broke. We'll see if we get some power on here. It did power up. Okay, boot manager is missing. That's that's okay, that just means there's probably nothing on this drive. I'm going to do a control delete and get into the um, BIOS here. <laughs> I just noticed something. This is very similar to the BIOS that's on my um, Dell downstairs, the uh, E60, was that 6530, something like that. That one's the business class system, but I guess they used this for a while around this time. This laptop, I looked it up, I believe is from either 2010 or 2011. So let's go ahead and see if uh, it's actually indeed finding this hard drive. And as you can see, it is. It shows this is a. Uh, 250 gigabyte hard drive doesn't show the speed but that's fine so it appears the hard drives logic board is functioning properly I just remembered it was the other Dell laptops bias that had the uh, diagnostic program so I'm just gonna run uh, C tools from a disk that I have because you know again I want to make sure this hard drive is good I like to take people's words that they've done the right diagnostics but you know you never know things can happen over time Yes, I accept. Oh, it should come up. There we go. Let's see, smart is supported and enabled. Smart has not been tripped, so that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here to basic tests, and I'm going to go to long test, and we're going to run an uh, in-depth analysis of this hard drive to make sure there aren't any bad sectors or anything like that. And... If all that clears, we're going to go ahead and reinstall Windows 7 because that's this what the COA is on here. 
Um, while that's running, I'll go over the specs of this system. This is a Core 2 Duo. Uh, I believe it's a T7200, which is like a 2.8 gigahertz Core 2 Duo. Uh, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM, a 250 gig hard drive. The original drive in this was a 320, um, but it had a uh, logic board problem. It would not power up properly. It would, it would try. I mean, you could hear the head trying to engage on the platter, but it wouldn't quite get there. Uh, this one has had moderate wear. You can see that uh, somebody was pretty heavy-handed on the space bar. You can see the matted finish there versus the uh, shiny area on here. And it's the same with the uh, middle of the enter key. And oddly enough, which is interesting, if you look closer, you can tell which keys they use the most. Like you can see the shiny N, the M, the J the F and the Y, whereas the other ones still have a, a, a nice um, texture on them. But it's still in very good shape. I mean, I, I can't really complain about this at all. It has a webcam on it. Uh, up front you have the uh, SD card reader. It's just got a blank in there right now. Got the charging, battery charging light here, and that did eventually come on, so this charger is 100% compatible. I checked that out in, out in the BIOS power button up here uh, these are your speakers there are no dedicated media buttons on this particular model this I don't think was a particularly high-end system I'd call this a middle to a budget uh, system back when it was new on the side here you have a blanking plate I think that would have been for a uh, PC Express card slot but this model does not have one you have your headphone microphone jack there uh, you have a dual layer DVD burner, uh, one USB 2.0 port. Coming over to this side, we have two more USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet port, VGA port. This, of course, is your AC power plug, and a Kensington lock port. And that is it. The, as as is with most new laptops, there are no ports on the back. So I'll go ahead and let this uh, continue. This is probably going to take an hour or so to finish, and once it's done, we'll, uh, and God willing, the hard drive passes all the tests, we'll go ahead and install Windows 7. Well, as you guys can see, it, hard drive did pass its tests. Actually, both of them passed the uh, short test and the long test. Uh, DST completed without error. Looks like they took about, I think it was about 20 minutes the whole thing took. The short test only took two minutes. <laughs> the long test was started two minutes later, so it was kind of interesting. Let's see. Uh, supported security features. Like we said before, the smart has not been tripped. And yeah, so that's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and load uh, Windows 7 on here, and uh, once that's done, I'll show you what this is like. I'm pretty sure it's going to be quick, because like I said, it's got the Core 2 Duo, and it does have 4 gigs of RAM. It's not quite going to be quite as fast as that other computer with the i3, but uh, I should still be able to find something interesting to do with this. Alright, as you can see, I'm watching an episode of Frasier in the background, one of my favorites, uh, where his son gets bar mitzvahed and Frasier gives his uh, speech in Klingon. I would highly recommend it, but I digress. I've been working on the uh, Dell laptop here, and I just wanted to show you guys, I don't know if it before, this is an Inspiron 1440, and I'm installing some uh, updates right now, it's doing some security updates, but I wanted to show you guys the specs on this. I actually already have somebody that's going to buy that other laptop, uh, the one I showed yesterday, so I think I'm going to be able to do an in-depth video on that one. But this one is has an Intel Core 2 Duo T6600. I said it was a 72. It's actually a 6600. Running at 2.2 gigahertz. 4 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, the 64-bit operating system. And this is genuine Windows 7. Now one thing I did not check is to make sure all the drivers are installed properly. And it looks like they are. Uh, let's see the processor here. This one is a true dual core. Uh, this does not have two extra logical cores like the other Dell uh, 17 did. Uh, this one is just again two real cores. 
uh, let's see, the sound and video card. It's the high definition audio device. Fairly typical for most computers these days. Wow, look at that. It's got a OptiArc DVD burner. I had one of these um, in another Dell. As a matter of fact, I think the Dell I have downstairs, the uh, Precision uh, 65 ser uh, 100 series that I have has this. And they're very good drives. I don't really have any complaints. A lot of times laptop drives, especially after years of years of use, the uh, lasers start to wear out. But if you look in here, see it's pretty solidly built. And this one actually has a blue hue to it, which makes me think this may actually have a Blu-ray playing capabilities, but it doesn't say it on the side. Kind of interesting. I'll have to look that up. But um, let's see what else we got here. Disk drives. Uh, it does have that Seagate 250 gigabyte uh, momentum, momentous drive. And it, you can definitely tell the 7200 RPMs versus the uh, 5400 because this is boots up probably 20 to 30 percent faster than the other Dell does, which has the that one has a 500 gigabyte Western Digital that's uh, 5400 RPM. And let's go look and see. Uh, the graphics in this is just the Intel graphics, it's similar to what was in the other one. Again, this was not as high end of a laptop as that other one is, but still in good shape. It's got the mobile Intel 4 series graphics, and there's the memory information. So all in all, not a bad little system. I'm probably going to put this one up for sale too because um, I don't really have a use for it. I have a good working laptop downstairs. I just haven't decided if I want to sell this one or my other laptop yet because this one actually has a functional webcam. You can see it right there. My other one did have a webcam, but it was a, a government surplus laptop. And what they actually did is they obscured the lens on it, so it really doesn't work. I just have it uh, disabled in the BIOS. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.